Hello, in this video I want to explain the follow function regarding compilers, especially LR scanning. Why do we need this function? I needed it when we when I talked about or when I studied about the LR scanning and its very detailed behavior. One important note to this video is I'm explaining it without the epsilon. Let's make a stroke here. Why is this important? The rule set is a little bit more complex when we use Epsilon, so I kind of do the light version in this video. I will also upload an Epsilon version later. And yeah, that being said, let's step into it. This is our rule set. I hope you understand that. All the big letters are, I'm not sure how to call it in English, like variable stuff. So not real input, just for us for processing. And real input is only the I and yeah, kind of the bracket braces here. So a valid input m m could be like I plus I times I. I hope this is clear so far. Also note that we have a small or down here. So it can be A or I. Okay, before we start off with the follow, we start off with the first. I hope you already understand what first is, what the first function tells you. Um, just as a small example for all these who don't know and should. First E is the first character that comes after the arrow here. So you check the E on the left side and you check, okay, what's the first what the first like letter or symbol here? What's the first symbol here is I or a brace, open brace. And the same thing with the D. And in case like with the C, you have the, the problem that you have a variable over here. So you check out the first of E instead, which is the same as this one. So this is equal, but that should already be clear, so let's stop it here. We care about the follow function, so I already prepared that. And before we get into that explanation, I at least want to show you this. This is what you see when you open up other YouTube videos or when you open up a book. I Basically, the rules are not so hard to understand, but I think this is not so intuitive. So I try to give a more graphical explanation to what we're doing, actually. Okay, let's start. Follow A. Follow gives us the sign that comes after the variable that is in here. That's basically all the explanation you need. Okay, what does it mean? Um, we check out the A on the right side. Remember when we checked first, we checked on the left side. Now we only care about the right side. Not only, but at first. Okay, so we check the next, le the next symbol after A, and this could be a brace. So let's start this set here could be brace closing brace brace and to complete this set over here we need another state maybe you saw this in other videos of me maybe looks like this the dollar sign here just says like end of file end of input it's just one sign for telling that is the end of input why do we need this or well, what does it tell us um an unwritten rule is that the first rule over here is coming from the first state, from the start state. And the start state should also terminate somewhere. And this is what this basically tells us. So when we got the input A, or when A was completed successfully, and then we don't have anything left, then we're finished. Why do we need to care about this? Because after A comes a dollar sign, and this is what we need to complete our set. Spoiler alert, this is finished. Okay. Let's check out B. B um, has apparently nothing, so it looks strange. We skip that. By the way, what we used here is the rule number one, if you're interested. Let's check out C. What comes after C? After C comes B. Hmm. What does that mean? That means that we're not, we're only interested in the characters, right? So we want to know what after C comes, so we have to check out the first of B. So let's first write it down. I give a better explanation later. First of B, which is a plus, like this. Okay, let's get into detail. This is our C, it's a big C, and this is our B. And now imagine we have some just random input. It doesn't belong to this rule set here, just triple A and triple B, no triple X in here. Then with the follow C, we want to know what comes after C? So what is the next thing here? And if it's B, then we care about the first thing in B. Because this is what will come after our last A, right? Should I keep silent for let it sink in? Okay, I hope you got that. If not, just check out the, um, just ask in the comments. I had a little bit of trouble understanding that in the first 
place. Okay, but uh, that being said, let's go on. We check out the D, the follow D over here. And we check again that, um, or we see again that there's nothing over there. So let's skip that as well. We check out follow E. What is after E? After E comes D. We have the same situation as with C and B. So when after, when, did you call it non-terminate symbol? So when after this kind of variable comes another variable, then we check out the first of that. In this case, give you five seconds or even less, first of D. And that's our multiplication. Okay, now it's a little bit more difficult. Let's check about, let, let's think about, sorry, I like the word check. Okay, let's erase that. Okay, what does this tell us? Let's think about this. It says that when we have the input C and B, or when we successfully got C and B, then this will be reduced or replaced by an A. And we're interested now what comes after B. So let's make a pointing line here. So which symbols come after B? Means when we talk about which symbols come after B, we talk about which symbols come after A. You can also imagine it as a box where A is in the, or, or basically represents the same thing as C and B together. And as we're interested in the next thing here, we're also interested in the next thing here, which is basically just the same. These are the two visualizations that I have. It was a very German pronunciation of that word. Anyway, so what does it mean? That means that follow B is follow A. And now we see, I hope this is clear now. If not, ask in the comments. And before you ask, check the comments. Maybe other people ask before you. I'm not upset actually, just my voice sounded like that. Okay, we got the same, we, we got another case over here. This says, again, we have nothing after B, so we check out, okay, this one, which is B. Um, let's just write it down, just because we can. Okay, what is this? So that means that we have the brace, we have the dollar sign, and okay, what is going to be B? This is like a recursion, we don't like recursions, so we just ignore them. And we really do. And that's correct. And just so you know, at the moment we're working with rule two. I don't like those though. Okay, so check out, let's check out D. Okay, we have the same situation. E and D can be reduced to C. So if we check out, or if we care about what's coming after D, we also care about what's coming after C, which is the same, or which has the same meaning. So the same thing again. And we have the same situation as here. After D comes another D. And yes, we could skip it. We don't need to write it down here. But speaking of me, I kind of feel safer if I had it here and later ignore it. Okay, what is the follow of C? We got that here. It's a plus. So we have a plus. And the follow of D is the recursion. So we just ignore it. And that's it. We're done. I hope you understood everything. Let's do a quick checkup. So we care about the next character that comes after our variable that we ask in here. And if there is a variable, then we care about the first thing that is inside, okay, just really small, inside, the first character inside the variable. If we have nothing, then we care about the follow of this thing that's coming here. By the way, why is I not in this, in one of these sets? Because there's no case where I is the following of something. Okay, that being said, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, write them in the comments, please read the video description. If I made any mistakes, I will correct them in the video description. 